guys, my name is Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on a 2015 and up at Ford F-150. Today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about backup cameras. Uh, there's a lot of these F-150 trucks that do not have a backup camera. Uh, such an incredible safety feature. Here at infotainment.com we carry factory and aftermarket backup cameras. Alright guys, so this particular camera that I'm going to show you guys how to install is actually an aftermarket camera. Now the reason why I'm going to show you guys how to install it is because it's very, very easy to do. The factory backup camera is a little bit more difficult. Um, now when I say aftermarket, I'm referring to the camera itself. Although it is aftermarket, it is actually very high quality, very comparable to the factory camera. Uh, what makes our products unique as well is we use factory OEM tailgate handles. You'll realize that a lot of the, you'll see a lot of these online. Um, they are aftermarket and they do break easily. There's nothing better than the factory OEM tailgate handle. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to replace the handle that's in this truck. We're going to run our wiring to behind the radio display. This will interface not only with factory radios, but also uh, aftermarket as well, for those of you who have an aftermarket deck. Um, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to program the vehicle's computer with the OBD Genie uh, programmer. This is going to turn the backup camera feature on. So um, I want to point out one more thing. We do have a blog post on our website, which I will link to the YouTube video. Um, it'll talk a little bit about the differences between aftermarket and factory. Um, those of you who are pre-wired up under your tailgate handle or up under your tailgate, um, you'll have five or more wires in the loom that is going to your handle um, down right below here. We'll have pictures on the blog post that kind of explain it. But if you have five or more wires in that loom, you are already pre-wired for backup camera. So the factory option may be a little easier. But most of you are going to notice you only have two wires coming in um, and that's when you're going to want to go with the aftermarket one um, just a much simpler install uh, the two wires are for the actuator in the locking mechanism in the handle so anyways let's get started first thing we're going to do is remove the eight t25 torx screws All right, now that the eight screws are removed, we can go ahead and remove the liner. And that'll also give us access to this upper plate here. Um, you're just going to remove that. Now, then you get access to the actual handle screws and the uh, mechanisms back here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is this little clip here. We're going to push both sides in. And when we push both sides in, it just pops right out. Okay. Now what you'll notice are two 10 millimeter nuts down in here. You can either reach in here on either side or you can actually put your tool right through this hole and you can take out those two 10 millimeter nuts. All right, now that those two nuts are removed, we can actually remove the whole handle. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull down on the handle itself and just kind of work it out so it comes right out. On the top here or on the bottom, for instance, these um, have little tabs. So almost if you almost kind of squeeze it and then pry it down, it'll pop right out. All right, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to take this right here and we're going to put it onto the, um, the handle that we send in the kit. Okay, now it's very easy to do. We're just going to fold it over, and then we're going to pry this off so we can slide it out. Then we're going to put it in the exact same position and then pop it in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to install the handle the same way we took out the other one. So we're going to come in from underneath. We're going to stick this part in first, up in, and then it'll go right in uh, with the two 10 millimeter um, screws there. So we'll come up underneath, we'll actually feed this in first, as well as the wiring. This 
just kind of tuck it on the side. And then I'm going to install the new handle. Hold down on the actual lever, you know, on the handle itself, and then it just goes right in. And now what we can do is we can install those two 10 millimeter nuts. Now that we have the two nuts in, we can go ahead and install this by just popping it into place. All right, before we route our wiring down through the tailgate into uh, underneath the bumper here, let's go ahead and make sure it's working. So you can tell if you pull the handle, the actuators are moving. So before we kind of put it all back together, just make sure it's all operable. So again, put the two 10 millimeter nuts in and then just pop this little bar. Um, it gives you a nice snug fit. Remember, this is a factory handle, okay? So it's gonna fit perfectly. All right, guys, now what we're gonna do is we're going to route our wiring, okay? So if you notice in this little cavity right here is the actuator lock harness, um, that we're gonna follow this right along that harness. So we're gonna stick it through the cavity and then right on this side here, we can grab it, pull it through, then we can feed it into behind the bumper here. So it's very easy to do. We're just going to stick it through there and then reach back here and grab it. All right, what you'll notice is about right here, there's another hole about this big. You gotta feed the wiring through. You'll know what I'm talking about when you do it. So it'll take you maybe an extra 30 seconds, but once you get it through that hole, you just pull the slack through. We do include some uh, zip ties, so you maybe want to zip tie to the wiring that's already in here, just so there's nothing kind of flopping around. But now that it's run through, we're going to stick it through this hole right here. Again, we're just following that wiring. You'll see this... Uh, pull here. Now this wiring is just going to drop behind the bumper right now. Alright, we went ahead and put a little zip tie right here. Um, so basically what we're going to do now, since we're kind of done with this tailgate portion of the install, go ahead and reinstall um, this top plate here. Uh, those of you who have the bed liner, uh, the plastic bed liner, you just line it all up. We're going to go ahead and put our eight screws back in. All right, guys, as you can see here, our camera wiring is back behind the bumper now. So now all we have to do is plug it into our loom. There's a little arrow here and a little arrow on the uh, connector itself. Make sure those two mate. Once we do that, now we can start routing um, this up towards the driver's side footwell. Okay? Um, these two wires here, this is going to interface with our um, radio. And then power and ground will interface with our kit called Easy DC. And that's going to give us plug and play power and ground. So at this point, we can go ahead and start routing this up. As I mentioned, we do include a lot of zip ties. So take your time and uh, let's get it up there. All right, guys, remember I was talking about the connector that may have two or five or more wires? That's the connector I'm referring to here. This is the one that runs the actuator in the, in the handle. Um, so this is the one we're following. This connector here, if you kind of look back on this end over here, you'll see it only has two wires here. That means the truck is not pre-wired for backup camera. If this had five or more wires, then certainly the backup, the factory backup camera would be an option for you. But this is that connector I was talking about. If you were to take your tailgate off, all you'd have to do is disconnect this connector and this would just give you an easy way to take the tailgate off. So what I like to do in my installs is I like to have this little quick connect right here. I like to just zip tie it close to here because if you do want to take your tailgate off, It'll be easy to unplug this for your actuator lock and this for your camera. So we'll go ahead and zip tie this here and the additional uh, part of the loom. And then we can start working our way towards the front of the truck. All 
All right, as I mentioned, guys, we're just going to kind of just follow our way up to underneath the driver's footwell or floorboard. Um, so we'll just kind of zip tight along the way. Uh, remember, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just kind of find your way up, kind of steer clear of moving parts, obviously, and use zip ties, you know, every 18 inches or so. All right, guys, we ran our loom right up along the other wiring, along the frame rail. Took our time, maybe took us 10 minutes to get up to this point. The rest of it's pretty easy here, guys. So um, there's all different ways you can bring the wiring into the truck. You could do it through the firewall. You could do it up under the floorboard, any way you want. Now, what I found is easy, similar to the Ram trucks, is there's a little grommet right here under the carpet. If you put just a little slit in that grommet, you could feed your wiring actually right up under here. It makes it very easy. In order to get access to that grommet, you could easily see it up underneath, but if you take apart the uh, little trim pieces here on the floor, just held in with retaining clips, um, if you lift up on the floor here, you'll notice the grommet right here. Uh, right below it is just as easy to get to so what we're going to do is we're going to put a little slit in that and we're going to feed our wiring through it. Alright, now we can start feeding our wiring from underneath. And then we can pull all the excess in. All right, now that we have all of our wiring, all we have to do now is just route it to behind the radio screen, okay? At this point here, you might wanna put a little bit of silicone on it, put it now or put it at the end of the install um, after you verified everything works perfectly. Just a little bit of silicone around there just to keep uh, you know water from coming in or whatnot, okay? So basically what I like to do is you can route it up behind the uh, brake pedal and gas pedal way up on top. Don't interfere, obviously, with the brake or gas pedal. And then route it to behind the radio. So we'll do that now. Sometimes it is a little easier if you pop this panel off. Again, just retaining clips. But we got our wiring back here now. So now I'm going to go way up over all this stuff and start zip tying the wiring. Okay, what I did here is I came up from behind here. There's a module. I went behind that. And then right behind this knee bolster, there's some wiring. I just kind of tucked it as close as I could to the knee bolster and zip tied it away. Um, and this is where we ended up. So now we can take apart the center, the, um, the bezel that goes around the radio. And we can run our video wiring and our power and ground. All right, guys, we're almost done, so hang in there. This is what we end up with here. So this is very important. You have power and ground, as I mentioned before, and you have your RCA video, okay? Now, how do you interface that with your radio display? I'll show you. So this happens to be the SYNC 4-inch display, okay? It's a base model display. What we're going to include for you folks is this cable here. This is the 4-inch screen connector. So we'll interface it like this. We'll plug this in the back of the screen, and then we'll plug the screen's factory wiring in here. That's how you get the video signal to the four inch screen. Now, if you have the eight inch screen, whether it's the My4 Touch or the Sync 3, we will include this cable. Same thing. You're gonna notice on the back of your eight inch screen is a Sync 3 or a, a My4 Touch module you're gonna be interfacing it with this connector here. You're gonna plug your factory connector into here and then simply plug your backup camera input into here. Now, those of you who have a four inch screen who would like to go to the eight inch system, whether it's My4 Touch or the Sync 3 with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, we will include this here. 
So this will all be part of the upgrade. It's such an awesome upgrade. I recommend taking a look into that, those of you who have the four inch screen. But that harness that we designed, you'll be able to interface the backup camera here. So it just makes it very easy to, to get the video to interface with whatever Ford system you have. All right, guys, now when it comes to power and ground, you can hook this up anywhere. You could hook it up wherever you like. That's a switched power source, power and ground, okay? What we include with our kit, which you're more than welcome to use, which we recommend, is called the EZDC. Now, this kit we designed to install right behind your cigarette lighter. So basically, unplug the plug that's in there. You're going to plug it into here. You're going to plug this plug into the back, and now you have an easy way to connect to power and ground. We do sell these separate on our website as well. It's a great little kit to tap into power and ground. Um, so then basically you're going to strip these two wires and then crimp them right into here. So it makes it a very seamless and clean installation process to get power and ground. All right, guys, in order to interface our video cable, uh, we're going to need to take off this bezel here. Now, in order to remove this, there's actually two screws underneath this top plate. So, uh, what we recommend is to remove this top plate, okay, and then that'll give you access to the two 7mm screws that hold the bezel to the dash, okay? So, those of you who have the top speaker here, or if you don't have the top speaker, you'll have just a little um, liner down there, but basically, just pull this out, just held with retaining clips, and then you'll have a 7mm screw here, and a screw there. Go ahead and remove those. All right, now that those two screws are out, we can just go ahead and lift up on this plate and just set it to the side. You don't actually have to remove it completely. All we're doing is we're trying to gain access to these two screws here. So now that we can gain access to those, we can go ahead and remove them. All right, now at this point, um, you could use your pry tool and you can pull this away around the perimeter. This is just held in with retaining clips at this point. Or you can kind of just muscle it. Basically, you're just pulling it back. Um, it's designed to pop right out. Um, but basically, what you're going to do is you're going to disconnect these two connectors up here. You push this little pin in and this comes out. See the little pin on the end? Push it in. Pull it out. And then these down here, um, just push this pin in down here and this pin in down there. And this is completely removed. All right, now we can remove this small little four inch display. Uh, four screws, one, two, three, four. Don't worry about the ones in the middle. Now we can just disconnect it. Push this little pin in here and slide the lever over and it comes right out. All right, now we need to get this to here. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tuck it back under here. And you'll notice by, if you look back in there, you'll notice your hand and the little RCA. So you can just reach back and grab it. All right, guys, I lied. If you take out these two seven millimeter screws that hold your base model sync module in place, it gives you a lot better access to be able to reach down and grab the wires you fished up. So we'll go ahead and pull this up. We'll take all the slack now and we'll just coil it up, put a zip tie on it, and we'll just kind of tuck it back behind. All right, the excess cabling, we went ahead and just coiled it up and then put our little zip tie on so then we can kind of tuck that back. Now what we want to do is before we do the video line, I'm gonna go ahead and do the power and ground. So we're gonna route this behind and we're going to uh, interface it behind the cigarette lighter with the easy DC kit. All right, the easiest way to route the power and ground to behind the cigarette lighter, honestly, is just to take the four screws out that hold your CD player uh, or what's called an ACM. If you just remove these four screws, you can remove the CD player completely, which gives you a lot better access to the plug behind the cigarette lighter. So we'll just pull this guy out. You don't even necessarily have to unplug it. You can kind of just have it laying there. But if the camera can see, 
this little gray plug down in here, that's the cigarette lighter plug. So we're basically just going to come from the side of it and disconnect it. Now, um, at this point, what we can do is we can go ahead and tap these two lines into our easy DC. All right, so what we can do here is we can just strip these wires back a little bit. And then simply interface them with the easy DC. Now you don't need any special tools. I mean, I remember back in the day I used to use just like a steak knife to strip them and then some needle nose pliers to crimp them. So you do that for both of them. All right, once you crimp them and you feel like they're nice and tight and crimped, um, get a little bit of uh, electrical tape if you have it and work your way around it. That's just kind of a best practice kind of a thing. Doesn't have to be overly pretty. We just want to make sure it's nice and secure. Now, all we have to do is just plug, once you route it, back. Now we just got to plug one end into our easy DC. And then the other end, we'll just plug right into the cigarette lighter. Just like that. All right, now we can go ahead and slide our CD player back in place. There is like a little guide pole in the back. Once you line it up, it just pops right in. Now we can install the four screws and then we can go ahead and put our sync module that we took out earlier. We took this out earlier just to get a little bit better access to, um, we didn't even actually unplug it. We just took it out temporarily to get us a little bit better access uh, behind. So anyways, put the uh, four screws back into the CD player ACM and the two back in for the sync module. All right, now that we have all of our screws into the CD player and the sync module that we took out earlier, we can now interface the backup camera video. So this, this particular vehicle had the four inch screen, so we're gonna use the four inch harness that's included with the kit. Simply just plug these in together, take the factory plug, plug it into the one end, make sure this is all the way up, and then it pulls itself in. The other end can go into our display, push it, and then lock it in. Now once you do that, you can tuck all your wiring. You could use a little bit of electrical tape if you want just to make sure this doesn't come undone. Then we're gonna tuck our wiring and simply install the display. All right guys, now that everything's screwed in, our kit is now completely installed, which is reinstall the bezel on the top uh, trim. And then the last step we're going to do is we're going to run the OBD Genie programmer into the vehicle's OBD2 port to program the vehicle for backup camera. So let's go ahead and put the rest of the, the uh, connectors back in and then we'll do that last and final step. Alright guys, now that the dash is all buttoned up, as I mentioned, the last and final step is to run the OBD Genie RVC programmer for the Ford. So basically all we got to do is put the vehicle in the run position. We're going to plug this into the OBD2 port and it's going to reprogram the FDCIM or the screen here to be able to recognize the backup camera. So we'll do that now. Alright, so the vehicle's in the run position. So all we have to do is just insert the Genie programmer 
We're going to wait for the green LED light to illuminate, and then we're going to pull it from the port and stow it away. All right, now that we have the green solid light, we can go ahead and remove it and stow it away. All right, guys, we went ahead and ran the Genie programmer. Um, we got the green light. We did notice that the screen itself reset, which is great. We turned the truck off, let it sit for a few minutes. So now we're about to turn it back on and check it out. So now you see you have not only the grid lines, but a crystal clear picture. It makes backing up so much easier and safer, as well as hooking up to a trailer. I mean, look how easy that is now. Bam, now we're right there. Just an awesome, awesome upgrade here at infotainment.com. I'm going to show you guys also what it looks like for you folks with the 8-inch screen. Or maybe you even want to go from a 4-inch to an 8-inch screen. Infotainment.com offers that. So let's take a look and see what it looks like with the 8-inch display. All right, now with the 8-inch screen, the backup camera is even better. So nice big display there which helps backing up, whether you're backing up into a parking spot or you're backing up to pick up a boat or trailer. Just an awesome, awesome upgrade here. And keep in mind, our Genie works, or the Genie programmer also can program the eight inch screen as well. We do this and so much more in infotainment. Besides just cameras, we do the factory LED headlights, the uh, tail lights as well, all factory. We do, um, we can also, we also have the capability to do side cameras, front cameras, um, leather seating. We're an authorized vendor for cat skin. So we have leather seating that is a factory option. We even show you how to install it if you want to try it yourself. Um, the speedometer cluster, take a look at this one here. This is an XLT truck. Look, it's got the Lariat uh, cluster in there. Full digital, awesome, awesome upgrade. Uh, those of you who have the auto start stop, option uh, we can disable that at infotainment.com keeps your truck from turning off at stoplights or stop signs um, we can also do uh, sirius xm satellite radio hd radio um, just all sorts of really cool stuff at infotainment.com so come check us out guys thanks for watching